Let's introduce the concept of variance. So we've talked about expected values, and this is just one particular kind of expected value. It's really a function that we're taking the expected value of, and it's really useful in a lot of contexts, and we're gonna see more of those as the course goes on. Uh, but for now, I just want you to remember that the variance measures how spread out a random variable is around its mean, okay? So the formula for that is gonna be variance of x, and that is shorthand for this expectation of x minus its mean squared, and then I take the expected value of that whole thing. Now this might seem a little bit uh, strange to have two expected values showing up in the same formula, but it's totally fine. And the reason it's fine is that um, this e of x in the inside is a constant. It's just a number representing the average. x is the random variable. And it's easier to understand formulas like this with a little bit of extra notation. Okay, so let's define mu of x as the expected value of x. And then variance of x becomes the expected value of x minus mu of x squared. And you can think of this whole thing as the expected value of a particular function. Let's call it y is equal to x minus mu of x squared. Right, so we care about this particular function x minus mu of x, a constant squared. Right, so mu of x is, we can just think of as some constant. It's a very special constant. It's the average or the mean. And the variance is just the expected value of this particular function. All right, and why, why do we need this? It really helps us distinguish um, in one little number what, um, what is going on with that random variable in terms of how much it's jumping around. So you could imagine two different random variables with the same mean. So let's say I have one random variable that's mean zero, and it's just a random variable that's always zero. And I have another random variable that is half the time minus one and half the time plus one. So that one is varying more, and you would expect then that its variance will be higher. We also introduce this idea of the standard deviation, which we write sigma sub x, and that is the square root of the variance. Okay, so it's just something you calculate the variance and you take the square root, that's the standard deviation. And sometimes we also write the variance as sigma x squared. The reason we like to have the standard deviation defined as well is that when we're calculating the variance, you'll notice we're squaring things. And if you're keeping track of units, we've now squared the units. And it's often useful to remove that with the square root. So we go back in terms of the original units of the problem. OK, sometimes the variance is easy to calculate. So if you are interested in calculating the variance of a linear function, you already have a variance. So let's say you have y equals ax plus b. You want the variance of y you know the variance of x, then it's just a squared times the variance of x. So what this means intuitively is that um, the variance does not care about shifting the random variable around. So when I shift it by b, that doesn't affect my variance calculation. So you'll notice that doesn't show up in this formula. And when I scale my random variable because of the squaring, that scaling gets squared too. So a becomes a squared. Let's just check that this formula is true. So let's just make sure I have the variance of y that is defined to be the expected value of y minus its mean squared. And so I'm just gonna plug in the definition of y, which is a linear function of x. So I'm plugging that in. So where, everywhere I see y, I plug that in. And now by linearity of expectation, I can work out the expected value of this linear function here, right? So this term, e of ax plus b, I can write as a of e of x plus b by linearity of expectation. Okay, now I can um, do a little bit of simplification because the b's cancel out, b minus b goes away. Um, and now I can pull out this a squared, right? And I'm left with something that looks just like the variance, and that's a squared times the variance of x. So we just check that that's true. Okay, we're gonna work out a longer example just so we have something to look at. So here I'm gonna draw the PMF of something I'm gonna call x. So it's really simple. I'm just gonna have three values. So it's gonna take a positive probability at zero, one, and two, has a half probability of being zero, a fourth of being one, and a fourth of being two. Okay, and I'm gonna say I have y, and that's two times x, and I'm going to have uh, then so two times x, the way that I'm gonna get the PMF is I take the value of x at zero and I multiply 
that by two to see where it goes and stays at zero. So I'm also gonna have a half at zero. Where's the value of x at one going to go? Well, that's gonna to go to two and the value of x at two is gonna to go to four. So this is what the new PMF is gonna look like. It's just more spread out. And z is gonna be a different PMF where I've shifted things over by one. So whereas I had zero, one, two, now I'm gonna have one, two, three for my uh, range. Okay, first let's work out the expected values here. Okay, and we're gonna do everything explicitly and then just verify that the shortcuts that we have are true. So here I'm gonna have zero times a half plus one times a fourth plus two times a fourth. That's my expected value calculation. That's three fourths. Here's zero times a half, two times a fourth plus four times a fourth. That's gonna be three halves. And notice that that's equal to two times the expected value of x. And that should be true because of linearity of expectation. So I didn't need to redo this computation. I could have just multiplied three fourths by two to start with. We'll see the same thing over here. I have one times a half plus two times a fourth plus three times a fourth, that's seven fourths, which turns out to be one plus the expected value of x, which again, by linearity of expectation is fine. I could have just taken three fourths and added one without redoing the computation. Let's see how the variance works out. Okay, so for the variance of x, the formula tells me I need to take the expected value of x minus its mean squared. That's the um, variance. So that is going to turn out to be the sum over the range of x, x minus its mean squared times p of x. Okay, so I have all these values, 0 minus 3 fourths squared. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that I take the first point in the range, which is 0, I subtract the value of the mean of x, which I know to be 3 fourths, I square it, and I weight that times the PMF at zero, which is one half. I'm gonna do that again, one minus three fourths squared times one fourth, because the value is one and the PMF at one is one fourth. And finally, two minus three fourths squared times one fourth. So all of that put together, so I have to simplify this, that's nine sixteenths times a half plus one sixteenth times a fourth plus 25 sixteenths times a fourth, that's 18 plus 1 plus 25 over 64. It's a lot of computation. I have 44 over 64. That's 11 over 16. Okay, so this is the variance of x. And we're going to see how does the variance of y compare. I'm going to do the same calculation over. The thing that's going to change here is going to be the values of y are going to get changed because y is a scaled version of x. And then the mean is also going to change. So I'm going to have 0 minus 3 halves squared times a half, then two minus three halves squared times a fourth plus uh, four minus three halves squared times a fourth. So this is going to be nine fourths times a half plus one fourth times a fourth plus 25 fourths times a fourth. So again, 18 plus one plus 25, this time over 16. So we get 44 over 16 or 11 over four. Now notice this is equal to two squared times the variance of x. So I could have skipped all of this computation and just multiplied the variance of x times two squared because y is equal to two times x. So I could have used that variance formula for linear functions to skip all of this. And finally for z, we're going to do the same thing. But before that, I want you to notice that the variance of y is higher than the variance of x. And the reason is y is more spread out than x. So I expect to see a higher value for the variance of y than the variance of x. And before we do the calculation, let's think, should we see a higher value for the variance of z? And the answer is no, because they're spread out exactly the same. It's just a shifted version and the variance doesn't care about shifts. So let's just see how that works out. I have one minus seven fourths squared times a half plus two minus seven fourths squared times a fourth, plus three minus seven fourths squared times a fourth. And that's equal to nine over 16 times a half, plus one over 16 times a fourth, plus 25 over 16 times a fourth. And that's again, 18 uh, plus one plus 25 over 64. Same thing we got before, 44 over 64, which is 11 over 16. And we know that's true because this needs to be the variance of x because the formula we have for variance of a linear function says if there's just a shift, the variance is not going to change. 
let me leave you with one last formula for the variance. So this is another formula which is really useful sometimes. If you want the variance and you have e of x squared and e of x, you can do the following. You can take e of x squared and subtract the square of e of x. So it's, in other words, we'll see what this means in a second, the second moment minus the square of the first moment. Why is this true? Well, the variance we know we can write like this, x minus its mean squared weighted by the PMF, where mu of x is the mean. And so I'm going to expand the square here, and I'm going to break up these terms. So I'm just showing you this quick reasoning. So I'm breaking up these terms into three different sums and working each of these out. So this first sum we know is just the expected value of x squared. The second sum I've pulled out 2 times mu of x, and I can see it's 2 times mu of x times e of x, and this last sum by normalization is just 1. So this works out to be e of x squared minus 2 e of x squared plus e of x squared. So canceling out, I get exactly the formula that I expected. And just to wrap up here, a bit more terminology, we sometimes call um, e of x to the n the nth moment. So you'll notice I earlier said second moment. So this is what we call e of x to the n. And if we're subtracting the mean like we do in the variance, it's called the nth central moment. So it would be e of x minus its mean to the nth power. So the variance you can think of as the second central moment.